Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, The Hungry Gamer is back with another part in our Dawn Shade How to Play video series. In this video, I'm going to first explain to you how the combination of Vaki works, how all the various Watcher blessings work, how Watcher alignment works, what the conditions are, and then what all the different quest tiles do in the game. So first off, we're going to talk about the different watchers. You'll see on your Vaki board you have the six different watchers, and each one is related to an element. You will also see that there are Tier 1 Vaki and Tier 2 Vaki. As you play the game, you'll be earning Vaki by rolling your Vaki dice in combat, or perhaps getting it from the Foundry by turning in Tawny. And at any point, what will happen is you are able to exchange two Tier 1 Vaki for the Tier 2 that falls in between them on the mat. So if you combine one Sun and one Mountain, you now have a Fire Vaki. And these you'll use to power up your special abilities using your special unique character dice. And then the same thing goes, you can combine a Mountain and a Water for Air, you can combine a sun and a water for nature. And you see how that works. In addition, at the end of every combat, you may have Vaki left on your board. If you have Vaki left on your board, you then turn it in to the gods, as it were. Let's just say, at the end of a combat, I was left with these three Vaki. So what I would do is I would turn these Vaki in, and for each one I turn in, I would raise the influence, the alignment I have with that particular Watcher. So one for my one Sun, and then two Mountain, and this would go up by two. Now I have triggered a shift. I am now aligned with that Watcher. When you become aligned with a new Watcher, you immediately receive the positive condition related to that Watcher. So here, I've become aligned with Yaris there, so I would gain this mended condition. And that'll last until the end of my first turn in the next combat. And I will talk about what each of those do in just a moment. Additionally, as you go, if at any time you wind up having all of the watchers at the exact same alignment, you are balanced. In which case, everyone would get plus one Vaki of their choice. But in the same vein, if at some point you ever have two or more Watchers that you are more aligned with than any others, you are unaligned. And becoming unaligned does not necessarily do anything bad to you. However, if you go to a Watcher Temple and you are unaligned, you'll have to throw all the conditions into the Dawnshade bag and draw them out, one per player, and you must take the negative condition as a result of you being unaligned. I will also say that your particular alignment with the Watchers does affect the end of the game and the story that you get at the very end. Now, let's talk about the various conditions. First, we have the two conditions that come from the Sun. You have Blind. When you are blind, you are unable to choose your target on the battle mat. Instead, you wind up taking your character chip from the edge of the mat and you flip it, and then whatever enemy it lands closest to, that becomes your actual target. And if you wind up going off the battle mat, then you simply flip again. The positive condition is focused. When you are focused, you are guaranteed to have the special result on your attack dice. Next we have the conditions that come from Zolot. That is precise, which means you ignore all of the foe's shields, and imprecise, which means you take whatever damage you do, and you divide that by two. Next, we will do our mountain conditions, which are mended, which simply means you add one more chip to your battle stack, though you can't go above your HP stat, or subdued. When you are subdued, you are unable to roll attack dice on your next battle turn. Next, we have our two air conditions. We have Airborne, which means when you are attacked, you have a chance to evade the attack. And the way that works is you will simply roll the Dawn Shade dice when you are attacked. If you successfully roll a Dawn and a Shade, you completely evade the attack. If you do not roll that, then you get hit as normal. The other is Cursed, 
which means you are unable to roll any Vaki dice, and the enemy cannot roll the faux die. Next we have the water conditions, in which case you are accurate. This allows you to reroll any dice that miss, however you are able to take those misses and count them towards your overdrive before you do your reroll. And the negative condition is stunned, which means you are unable to roll any defensive dice. The final condition comes from nature. You are agile, which gives you one additional die that you're able to roll for that turn. Or you are slowed, which means you have minus one agility, and therefore one less die you can roll that turn. And then next we'll talk about the various Watcher Blessings. You gain Watcher Blessings as you travel around the quest mat, and you will see these laid out on the mat. If you place a tile where one of these is, you immediately get to collect it, and it goes to whoever the active player is. The first one is this miss. What this means is you would immediately add in to the attack targeting deck one of these blank cards. This simply means if this is drawn, no one takes any damage. It is just a miss. The next one is we have Transfuse. You're able to use this during battle to transfer hit points from one ally stack to another. Next we have a simple plus one damage. The next time you damage a foe, you do one additional damage. We have a plus one shield, which very simply means that you will add one shield to the bottom of your battle stack. And again, you can never have more than three shields on the bottom of your stack. Next we have plus one Vaki. You simply add a tier one Vaki to your battle mat. And then last we have Wild. You use this, you're able to change one die to any face that you want. The next thing that you need to understand is what each of the various quest tiles does when you land on it during the quest phase of the game. The first one that we have is the village. The village is one of the quest locations that you can always move to on your turn instead of revealing another quest tile on the quest map. And the village operates as all of the available outposts in the game. You are allowed to choose one of them and act as if you found a specific outpost type. Now, there are several types of outposts available in the game. There is the Guild Hall. When you go to the Guild Hall, you are able to spend any training points that you have earned so far throughout the game and are sitting unused on your Vaki mat. The next type of outpost is the Foundry. When you go to the Foundry, you have the option of transmuting Tawny into Vaki at the rate of three Tawny for a single Tier 1 Vaki. You can either place this Vaki on your battle mat to be used in the next battle, or you can use it to immediately adjust your alignment with the various Watchers. The next outpost that you can potentially visit is the Tavern. And at the Tavern, you have the opportunity to gamble. And when you gamble, you are either going to make more Tawny, or you're going to lose it all. And there are two games you can play. There are the Double Doublers Dice, and the Watcher's Runes game. The first game is the Double Doubler's Dice. And the way it works is every player that decides that they would like to participate in the Double Doubler's Dice will place their ante on top of the kinship marker. The amount you can ante is determined by what tier you are currently on or what chapter you are currently on. In Double Doubler's Dice, each player that wants to make a wager places their tawny on top of the kinship marker. Then, you will roll the Dawn Shade dice. What you are trying to roll is a Dawn and a Shade. If you have rolled a Dawn and a Shade, you are in balance and you have succeeded. So if you roll and you have rolled that like I did there, I would have doubled my money. Then any player that wants to back out can take their winnings and be done, or you may attempt to roll again to double your double. And again, you simply roll the dice, and if you have done like I have here, you have one, and again, you have doubled your money, and then you take that back. The other game that you can play is called Watcher's Runes. And in this game, again, every player who wants to participate will place their ante on top of their kinship marker. And again, the amount you can ante is determined by the tier or chapter that you are on. 
For this game, you will be taking the hit deck of every player that is participating and you will be shuffling it together. Once you've shuffled it together, you will one by one flip over a card and you flip the first one over and if you see a tawny down in the corner, then congratulations, every player who's still playing has won a single tawny. At that point, every player has the choice to either keep going or drop out. After you have done that, you flip another card. And again, if you see a tawny at the bottom, you add a coin to the stack. However, if you see a rune, like here, you add nothing. And then you again have the choice to keep going or to drop out. And you continue drawing cards, either adding tawny to your stack, and then either dropping out or not, until you have drawn two runes from the same character. So as you can see here, we are still drawing. Now, I will point out this is a second rune, but it is from a different character, so we would continue to draw. And here, at this point, any player who was still in would have lost all of the money that they wagered and the money that they have won. The next outpost that you can visit is the Boomshot Gallery. And the Boomshot Gallery is another mini game that you play on the reverse side of the battle mat. And we will discuss that a little bit later when we talk about all the various mini games. Those are all the various outposts that you can visit. At the end of any visit to an outpost, you will then receive rewards, which you check the logbook to find out exactly what those are. The next type of tile that you can come across is the journey tile. The journey tile immediately allows you to draw another tile and place it out and then continue along with your movement. In addition to that, for passing through a journey tile, you will immediately receive four XP. The next type of tile that you can come across is the Watcher's Temple. When you visit the Watcher's Temple, every character will immediately gain the bonus that is associated with whatever Watcher they are most aligned with. At the end of the visit to the Watcher's Temple, all players receive 8 XP. The next type of tile that you might come across is a battle tile. When you come across a battle tile, you then go to your logbook, and based on whatever level you are, you'll check the logbook to find out what story event is going to happen. In all instances, these will result in a fight, however there may be choices that you're able to make in the battle to give yourself a bonus or your opponent a disadvantage. The result of all battle tiles will wind up with you going and performing a battle on this mat over here. Again, we will discuss how battles work later on in this. The next type of tile that you can visit is called an event tile. Event tiles are numbered 0 through 20, each one having a different story that goes along with it. Like with your battles, you will then go to your logbook, but instead of being based on level, it is based on the event number written on the tile. As with the battle, you then go to the logbook and you see the event, you read the story, and you will have a choice of paths that you can go on, all of which will result in you gaining something beneficial or perhaps getting some kind of penalty as you move forward. Also, I will say that all of these will also result in you doing some kind of stat check. We will talk about stat checks when we discuss mini games a little bit later on. And the final type of tile that you can find is the major threat tile. When you find the major threat tile, just like with your events and with battles, you will be going to the logbook to read your story and find out exactly what is going to happen. And just like with a battle, which story you get is completely determined by the level of your kinship. Again, you will have story, a choice to make, and then you will do some kind of test which will result in either a benefit or a penalty to the kinship or your foes. And again, all major threats conclude with a battle which we will again talk about later on. After you have completed a major threat, if this is not your final chapter, you would then reset the quest deck and start again at your new level. And that will do it for our second How to Play video. You can check down in the description for information as to what the next video will be, and if there's something in particular that you're looking for, you can find a link to that particular video as well. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.